Hey everyone, we are live here from the MI Gardener channel. Uh, we are attached to the Wi Fi. I did get that resolved. However, I'm not confident that I got it resolved 100%. So um, if we if we start going crazy and start to get and the, the signal starts getting dropped, well then, hey, I'm, I apologize about that. But we are in the garden today, harvesting beans. Hello, Joseph Koo, how's it going? And hello, beautiful purpose. Hello, good morning. Geneva, good morning. Geneva's having breakfast. Good morning, Matthew Leisure. Hello, uh, Jack Gray, 21. Hello, Catherine D. Hello, Allison Kramer. Hello, uh, Sutton Dixon. Hello, uh, Maury Song. Um, uh, wow, good morning to everyone else. Um, wow, just major influx of comments coming through. Um, so Cindy and I, we are... Say hi. Hi. <laughs> we are. We got some yellow beans to harvest for. It's exciting. You want to so, see what we have so speak, far? Speak up because it's got the reverse camera. They can hear me more than they can hear you. <laughs> it's because the, the front facing camera doesn't have the microphone on it, mm -hmm. so it, it picks me up before it picks you up, unfortunately. Hi, guys. Is that loud enough? That's probably loud enough. Okay, cool. So. We've so far, okay, so show them how far we've picked, Cindy, I, I think, right, Wait, like a like so a line. right here. Look at all, okay, all the foliage that's been like trampled, that's all the, the beans we've been tossing back and forth to pick. We still have that many more to go. We did pick this one little row here of, of Blue Lake bush beans, and that one's coming on in like another week, those will be ready. We, we, st um, we staggered them in succession so that we wouldn't have all of our beans coming on at once. Uh, we have all of our beans coming on at once. I, there's no succession here. <laughs> yeah. um, so, wow. This is, uh, this is, I mean, this is going to be our new home for our, uh, for our coffee, or our, sorry, not our coffee, our lemon tree. And so we decided to use it as a basket since all of our bushel baskets are at the cottage right now. We have not had a chance to bring those back. Um, but, uh, it's going to be probably around, I think if I measured this, this would be like three quarters of a bushel, I bet. Um, so right now we're doing pretty good about quarter, about a quarter full or maybe a little more than that, maybe a third full. So, but the beans are just loaded. Look, come bring them close to this one. Pull that back. Pull that back. Holy smokes. Yeah, absolutely. We got 110 people. You're... Say hello to 110 people. Hello, 110 people plus counting. counting. Yeah, 111 now. So where are we on YouTube or Facebook? We're on YouTube. YouTube. Here's we're into some green beans. So we planted a lot of yellow. A lot of these were yellow, and now a lot of these are green. Um, because green, they, the Blue Lake bush beans just outproduce everything else, uh, like three to one. So if you're going for production, um, it's one of those things that. Uh, the blue lake bush bean is what we plant um, But we also have in here. We have, we have mixed beans. So we have strike bush beans. We have contender bush beans blue lake bush beans um, We have the the yellow wax bean obviously, uh, but then we also have Somewhere in here. I'm not even sure where somewhere in here We have a couple black valentine beans because those produce really well in hot weather that none of the other beans really do and the black valentine um, is very heat tolerant, but I'm not sure where it is because they all the beans look the same. So uh, the only way you can tell is when you harvest the pods, but there's even not even really a large difference in the pods. It's just in the production of them, but I know they're in here somewhere. It's kind of like a where's Waldo. Um, so you're, oh, you're still picking yellow. Yes, I'm still gonna leave, leave some two sides up. Yeah, I, yeah, that's fine. There's still a lot more beans even, I mean, even a lot on here that are just barely forming but oh there's some more yellow there it's kind of hard to do this with one hand our freezer's <laughs> already filled with beans too there we go um adam Werwood asks can you show the density of how you planted your seeds uh kind of it, now that they're fully grown it's a little bit difficult but i think the best example is over here so we planted so we have hold on what are you doing? Sit down in your seat. I'll sit her, I'll sit her, don't worry. She's like climbing out. 
<laughs> um, so we have our, uh, so we have, oh, I actually missed a couple. Um, so we have our, wow, I missed a lot here. I probably missed this whole plant. So we have our bean plants here spaced apart about every three inches. So there's three inch spacing, about three inch spacing, about two and a half, maybe three inch or so. So yeah, it's about three inch spacing between each plant. And um, yeah, and they, they just do really well. They, they, they do get really crowded. So if you're someone that does not like crowded plants, definitely this method will not agree with you. But if you like production, the beans produce very well, uh, even at three inch spacing. So look at this, oh my gosh. That's from one plant. One second, ah, can't do this one handed. It's very difficult. Um, so, but yeah, that's, oh my gosh, that is insane. Okay, well there's, there's all those beans there. So I missed, it's very easy to miss beans. Very, very easy to miss beans. There we go. Okay, so going back, are you on back? I'm just getting to the okay. Uh, yes, Matthew Leisure, the stream has started. Um, I'm not sure how much longer we'll be live streaming because we got to get these beans harvested, but I figured I'd be here for at least a little bit. Let's turn you guys around. All right, so we had some questions roll through here. Um, Greg Shishan, uh, Shishan, what is your favorite? dish using yellow beans uh i mean to be kind of i mean generic i love just steaming the beans adding just a little bit of salt and pepper to them nothing beats it it really is just the best way to enjoy beans um yellow green doesn't matter fresh green beans are my weakness i will eat far far more than maybe i should I feel, sometimes I'll have a whole meal of just green beans. When they're in season, I'll just, okay, mono meal it up. Have lunch with just green beans. So, uh, yeah. But the garden itself is looking incredible. We're going to be planting more lettuce there very soon. And then back there, we'll be planting a, a fall garden of, um, of more beets and carrots. So, uh, Kimbian Sukan asks, what's your favorite type of bean? Uh, all types. They all have their pros and cons, really. I, I, I don't have any any preferences when it comes to beans. As long as they produce and they produce well, pretty much that's about it. Um, the one variety we're not growing this year that I'm kind of bummed I didn't plant any of, which I, I still have time. I guess I could plant more if I wanted more, but we'll I think we'll be fine with what we have. Uh, is a, we didn't plant any purple wonder beans. We plant um, or purple majesty, I guess is what it's called. Uh, purple majesty, um, purple wonder. There's a lot of different names for it. It's a beautiful purple bean, and they turn green when they're cooked, but they're just a stunning purple bean. Um, but uh, those are not in here. I don't know why. I planted like everything else. But um, yeah, so those I like those beans. Are we still live? I don't know. It says very bad connection. I have full connection. Am I coming through okay? Let me know if I, let me know if I'm coming through okay, or if I need to change my my uh, signal. I'm not sure. It's saying I have very bad connection, but it, I have five bars of of Wi-Fi. Again, this is what happened last time. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Um, do I have good connection? Yes. No. Yes. No. Um, let me know. Let me know if I if I'm coming through okay, because uh, I want to make sure that I'm not. Uh, I'm not, I want to make sure that I'm not, uh, you know, getting all glitchy on you. So, um, I just, yeah, it said, okay, it's lagging. Um, okay, bear with me, folks. Uh, I don't want to do, yeah, I don't want to do, I don't want to end the live stream because I still want to answer some people's questions, but I want to understand, uh, I want to understand what's going on. Like, I have full Wi-Fi. I'm literally... The Wi-Fi connector's right. All right, we're back. Hopefully we're back. Are we good? 
let me know if we're good. <laughs> I don't know. I had, to, I, had to, I had to just completely go right to our original Wi-Fi. I'm gonna call the company and just uh, tell, I don't know, I don't know. It's, it's frustrating because I love doing live streams, but they really, they really ruin it by not selling us a good quality product. I don't know. I mean, Cindy, that thing cost 140 bucks. I, I'm literally standing three feet from it. How is the connection that bad? I don't, I, it's, it's, it baffles. So we're back. We're back. We're back, folks. I don't, again, I don't know. Hey. Oh, no, you're good. You're good. We're, 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 no, you're fine. We're, we're, we're live streaming, but don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. We're talking to our neighbor. Don't worry. <laughs> you're, you're not, you're not on YouTube. I promise. <laughs> She's a recipient of our vegetables, though. So, so someday we'll see if she wants to come on. But as of right now, she's, she's, uh, yeah, she's a sweet neighbor. Um, so, um, yeah. So we are, um, we're still gonna pick beans. If you guys have any more questions, let us know. Um, I, I guess this is working fine. Everyone's saying that the connection's fine now. I, I'm not on the extender. I'm actually on the regular Wi-Fi. So, um, so ask away, folks. Ask away. And I do apologize. Um, I pride myself in quality kind of content, and I don't think that that's quality when it comes to uh, content. When it's constantly getting dropped, it's just not not fun for me, and it's not for any not fun for anybody else. So, um, let me know. Uh, let me know. Uh, ben uh, Ben Frick, do you fertilize beans at all? Given that they fix nitrogen, um, we actually in this bed use Revive RX in this bed. This is our test bed with, uh, so it's a soilless potting mix called ProMix. Um, and the, the ProMix, uh, the, what's, what's good about it is that it's super porous, it's really good at retaining water, and it's, uh, it's soilless. So it will it'll break down to create soil, but it's, it's very fluffy, so the roots can just have awesome um, uh, aeration and stuff like that. The downside to it is that there's no nutrients. So we had to supplement with some nutrients. And so even though the beans fix nitrogen, I still apply uh, Revive RX in a liquid form. The rest of the garden, the rest of the garden has trifecta applied to the entire thing. Um, but this bed here, I wanted to try it as just a standalone. Well, also the, the cucumber bed as well. Um, those are the two, those are the two beds that are soilless. So they needed some form of, of nutrients. I would always recommend giving them something. Um, cause even though people say don't, don't fertilize beans cause they'll create a whole lot of foliage and not, not a whole lot of fruit. There's some truth to that, but they still need some nutrients. I don't care. I don't care who you are. I can show you beans that don't have that don't have nutrients, not in this garden, but I mean, I can show you pictures of beans that don't have nutrients and they clearly need some nutrients because uh, they're like yellow and withering and dying. Um, so yeah, I think it's a little bit of a misconception that they will fix, uh, that they'll just automatically fix all of their nitrogen needs. So how are we doing? Do you want me to hold the camera? Okay. If you want, yeah, that'd be great. My hand's getting a little tired. I normally prop it up on like a camera stand, but Cindy's gonna, Mrs. Emma Gardner's gonna hold the camera. Cindy, oh. there you go. All right, I'll turn it around. You so. can, yep, you can flip it. You guys wanna see Luke. <laughs> and then you can field any questions, you can field questions too that, that come in. Yeah. So a little off topic, a little off topic. Oh, how do you know if beans are ready to be picked? I have quite a few in my garden this year. Um, okay, uh, well, um, I don't think you're pointing at me. <laughs> you're just like down pointing on the ground somewhere. Sorry. Um, so, uh, Sorry, guys. so beans are ready at any stage, but you want to make sure that you pick them before they start forming their the beans inside. The best time to pick like snap beans or green beans is when the, the green bean itself um, just starts, it's, it's plump, it's, it's full, but it's not over full. Like see these little bumps here? These little bumps are the green beans forming inside. And if I split this open, see it's not there. You can't really get to a whole lot. There's, there's not a whole lot of, it's mostly water. As this bean matures, it'll begin, it'll begin to, uh, the seed pods will begin to form and mature in here. You want to get them when they're like this because this is when they're the meatiest and the most tender because you see that's the seed right there that's the immature seed and and it kind of prepares for that by swelling once you start seeing that swelling as soon as you see that swelling pick 
the green beans. Um, you can pick it a little bit sooner than that too, but this is when you're getting the most bang for your buck. Um, but at any stage, at any stage, they're going to be good for you to pick. Um, I mean, like even these, see, these are immature. This is a little bit immature here, um, but you can see if it eat this. I'll prove that to you because they're good. They're delicious. They're immature. They could get a lot bigger. And that's my whole thing is you might as well leave them on because beans, they produce so much. You Having can trouble again. You can afford, finish. you gotta be joking me. <laughs> you can afford to keep the tiny beans on because you're gonna have more. There's a lag. Um, someone said it froze. Someone asked, where does the, what's it called? Um, that they planted some peas mm -hmm. and could the hot weather stop them from coming up? Um, peas? I mean, peas don't like hot weather. Um, beans, they love hot weather. I mean, they like growing in hot weather. They don't produce well in hot weather. Um, so peas don't, peas don't really like hot weather. I'd typically keep them out. If it's any hotter than like 65, 70 degrees, they're just going to do poorly anyways. So just don't plant them. Um, but I don't think, I don't think they would, I don't think they would not sprout if it was too warm. Okay. Are we having and how do you deal with moles? Um, uh, yes, it says very bad connection. I don't, YouTube's messed up. I would, I'm gonna, um, I think it's YouTube. I don't think it's, I don't think it's ours. Oh, no, you're good now. No, I don't, no, I, I don't, You're good now though. I think we should switch, so, I think we should switch to Wirecast Go. So I think the YouTube app on our phone is the one that's thinking there's an issue and there's really not an issue. So how do you deal with moles? How do I deal with moles? Yeah. Um, the best way is to build a raised bed and put uh, mesh underneath, like chicken wire. Put chicken wire underneath the beds and then build on top of the mesh. It's really the only way you can prevent moles. Um, I've never had moles. And thank goodness I've never had moles, but um, yeah, they're they're a nuisance. They'll eat all of the roots in your garden. They'll burrow underneath and and eat your plants. They're a they're a detriment to any gardener. Um, but yeah, you can put your raised beds right on top. Make sure your raised beds are about an inch or, or uh, twelve inches deep to give you good you know a really good uh, so you know a medium for your plants to grow in but they'll do fine. Um, how do you plant uh, large buds quickly and easily? In terms of what? <laughs> I mean, it's a, kind of a difficult question. I mean, how do I plant large beds quickly and easily? Mm -hmm. Just do it. <laughs> I mean, really, I mean, it, you just do it. I mean, this bed here, 48 square feet, to plant out to plant it out with beans it also depends on the size of seed um but i mean it only takes goodness maybe 10 minutes at most to, to plant out this bed with beans um if that so it's really not that hard um, um do you prune any of your bush beans no no you don't need to no nope, you don't need to prune your bush beans um, bush beans are a bush for a reason and why do beans are stringy uh, beans are stringy because either you don't, either you're harvesting, you're waiting too long to harvest, all beans will get stringy, um, or you don't have a stringless variety. Um, you can, a lot of your, uh, like there's a Landreth stringless, Blue Lake bush bean is a stringless variety. Um, you can get a lot of, you can get a lot of different stringless varieties. Um, varieties I'd stick away from is, one is called Roma, it's a type of bean also a type of tomato don't get that confused but um, Roma beans are very stringy they're like a flat bean um, I have never ever ever had strings on my beans it's all in how you harvest them when you harvest them um, things like that so and Kathy asked when's a good time to plant for fall I guess that varies in your totally location varies. Totally varies what you're trying location. to grow you yep. have to look to maturity date and uh, Yep. Your zone, really. Ooh, Cindy, you're getting good. I know, but I am. Yeah, my gardener. I guarantee you they're, all they're seeing is something they probably don't want to see. <laughs> well, um, I was showing the angle. beans. <laughs> um, so, uh, no, I mean, I just, I don't think they need a, a knee shot. 
my knees are <laughs> scuffed up as it is. <laughs> um, um, no, but yeah, no, I mean, it really varies on what they want to grow. What's the matter? Um, no, I'm just trying to see some questions. Oh, okay. Um, where do the, your seeds you sell come from? The seeds we sell come, the seeds we sell come from uh, a seed broker that deals with local and small seed farmers. So, I mean, they come from all over the place. I, you, there's hundreds of seed farmers that sell to a seed broker. It makes it just easier for us to shop around. Um, we don't, you know, we don't go right to the seed farmers because they don't sell to, That's too big. they don't, no, yeah, I mean, it, it's gonna be fine, Oops. but they don't sell, the, the, the seed farmers don't sell to individuals like us because it's not, it's not their market. They don't sell, they don't look, they don't look for guys like us and say, hey, I have, I have tomato seeds to sell or I have bean seeds to sell. They look for seed brokers who then work with people like us because that way seed companies can go there and find, uh, find all the varieties they need. So um, yeah, so all around, I mean, we get our seeds from all around, but they're all, they are all family owned companies. Honey, is this a bean? Is this maybe the Valentine's um, Oh yeah, thing? no, that, this bean's having some issues here. Um, oh, okay. th this is a really common, a lot of times people will see this happen to their beans. Um, right here, you'll see your, your bean leaves get really spindly and, and odd shaped. This is actually, right here, this is actually just a deformity that happens with the bean. It's not a disease, it won't spread, it's not an issue. Um, it's really just a, it's a, it's like basically just a growth defect um, that happens. And it's, it, it's a genetic mutation. So you'll see there, it's just uh, funky. <laughs> and there's nothing you can do about it. I mean, you can't cure it, you can't prevent it. If you want to pull it out, pull it out. It does not affect fruit production or anything like that. The leaves just look all weird. So yeah, it's 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 real common. It happens every year. We like our vegetables wacky anyways. <laughs> Someone asked, uh, let's see. Oh, um, any um, tips for growing large sunflower heads? Well, you, it's all in the variety you're growing. Um, Mammoth sunflower? You gotta grow, yeah, like something like mammoth sunflower or sunspot, things like that. Um, any of your your uh, striped, your, any of your striped sunflower seeds, um, I saw like gray stripe, like a gray striped sunflower, those are all really large, and then you need lots of sun and lots of nutrients in your soil, lots of nitrogen. Um, and that's, it's really not difficult. They'll, they'll do the rest. You just give them the right conditions and get the right variety and they'll do the rest. Cool. Heather Gray asks, um, any ideas for what to plant during the fall? She already has her beans, beets, and zucchini done. So what would okay. you recommend? Um, done as in like planted or done as in like done for the year? I so. think planted. Like she already, like it's done. Like, well, because like you can plant beans or you can plant beets for the fall season. So like done as in planted, great if you planted them. If they're done as in done for the season, plant they're more. They're finished for the year. Okay. That's what I thought you meant. Plant more. You can totally plant more. Um, I mean, so, it, it depends on your season, how long it is. If you're, if you're near Michigan at all, um, if you're in like zone five or lower, or zone five or going south, because <laughs> um, <laughs> you'd expect the numbers to go lower, except the numbers actually go higher the lower you go. So zone five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You have lots and lots of season. Um, so you can plant, uh, you can plant things like beans are really fast, 45 days. Um, you can plant things like, you can plant things like, uh, beets, which are really cold hardy. Um, you can plant things like carrots, uh, lettuce, spinach, oh yeah, lettuce, would be good. lettuce, spinach, um, mustard greens, radishes. Uh, my goodness. I mean, there's so many. That's why any, that's why folks, it's really hard for me to answer specifically when someone says, when someone says, what should I plant for a fall garden? It's like, well, what do you like eating? Cause I mean, with the exception of a few things I and mean, with the exception of peppers and tomatoes, awesome. With the exception of like peppers and tomatoes and maybe potatoes, you can literally grow like anything else you want. I mean, what do you like to eat? That's, that's the thing. And if you like to eat it, plant it out. Plain and simple. <laughs> or if you just want to try something new, you, you don't know if um, you're going to like it. But, um, you can always do that too. But lettuce is good. Spinach. 
Um, someone in Ohio asked, sorry, I'm not saying your name. Um, I'll look. Angie's Pantry asked, is it too late for her to plant uh, rattlesnake beans for this year? She's in Michigan. Um, Probably, right? Rattlesnake, that's beans. a pole bean. Uh -huh. well, pole beans are a little bit longer maturing. Uh, it'd be it'd be tough. It'd be tough for, for rattlesnake beans. Bush beans are not bad. Like you, you can get like you can get something with bush beans. The thing is is pole beans, they take quite a while longer to mature. Um, you're talking like 15, 20 days longer to mature. So I, I think when you're talking that much longer to mature, I, I I don't think that one is as possible as as uh as like bush beans. Okay, but you can always go ahead and plant it and you can always try. Try, right? Yeah, it does not hurt to try. Um look at this hole here. Look at that. Look at that. And also someone asked, um <laughs> how do you ready when it's uh, when the sunflower seeds are ready to get harvested? Um that's kind of a tough kind of a tough question to answer like without one in front of me yeah um i mean when the sunflower seeds are ready to be harvested is when you can see the sunflower seeds yeah um, like the seeds the seeds will hold on to the sunflower head itself and and the flowers will fall away exposing the seeds underneath and then when you can see the seeds hardening up like they'll look very immature for a while maybe like a month or two months That's after they <laughs> after they after they mature mm -hmm after the seeds mature they're going to harden up and they'll and they'll um you know they'll uh they'll they can be they can be peeled away from the from the head i'm just gonna stand here for a bit cindy will you be doing any videos on canning well well yes i am <laughs> we are going to um we've actually already canned quite a couple of things we did strawberry jam Grape jelly, uh, cherry chili habanero jam, beets, and, should... and pickles. And we did dill pickles. And I'm gonna actually do a video on doing baby food pouches. Um, we already did a couple for Geneva, and she's enjoying those. So I think that would be fun. Which, speaking of which, we should uh, we should end. We should do like two more questions and then end, just so we can go check on her. <laughs> yeah, I know. She's, watching, She's just finishing her breakfast right now. She's watching so. her, her cartoons. Uh huh. Can you plant beans with sunflowers to help with nitrogen? Um, very common misconception. Um, common misconception. I know they can't see that. Um, you can't. I mean, you can, but don't expect the sunflowers to get a whole lot of nitrogen from the from the from the beans. Nitrogen fixing crops like beans or clover or peas, they do fix nitrogen, but most of that nitrogen is used by the plant itself. Um, a very, 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 very small amount is shared, and that's why on large farms, they rely on that because you add up all that nitrogen and it results to a larger amount that's usable. But when it's like, like if I take, I mean, even if, even like for instance, Cindy, show them this, like, like let's say I took all these plants right here, all these plants, and I put a sunflower right here. The amount of nitrogen that the sunflower would use is is far more than all of these beans combined could provide. I think that's a big misconception. That's a huge misconception is that um, people say, you know, like three sisters gardening. Oh, plant the beans next to corn and the beans will give the corn the nitrogen. It's totally false. Now. If you're practicing something called chopping and dropping, where you harvest the beans but take all the foliage and stuff and mulch it and let it just um, break down and, and rot on the soil, that's going to give you a ton of nitrogen because the nitrogen that the plant produces goes into the biomass, the leaves, which then gets broken down and feeds the flowers. But if you're just growing them next to each other, it's not going to do anything for you. Now, if you're growing pole beans, pole beans really love the support that the sunflowers provide and will coil up around the base mm -hmm. of the sunflowers and it's free trellising which doesn't hurt anything but I just want people to understand there's things that don't hurt as gardeners that won't hurt you to try it but I want people to understand the reasons why things happen um, and and to not misinform people because there's good things that a gardener can do saving space growing vertically that's a really good thing that gardeners could do but if gardeners 
claim that they're helping to feed their garden by by growing nitrogen fixing plants next to nitrogen hogging plants that's just not true um, and so that you're not going to get a benefit from that and what we're, our channel is all about is valid information that's reliable and trustworthy and um, and I just think that that it's it's been very misconstrued over time um, because they do fix nitrogen just not enough of it uh, through the sharing process that would be valuable to plants so I mean at the end of the day um, plants are kind of like greedy in a way they they'll take what they need yeah so it's not necessarily gonna give out they're just trying to feed themselves <laughs> yeah I mean nitrogen fixing plants will nitrogen fixing plants will fix nitrogen um, and and that's you know it's good for gardeners because we can reuse that especially if you're using it as like a cover crop you, know, you can take the beans at the end of the year and till them in it's a great way to re you know to increase the amount of organic matter you have in your soil but um, it's just yeah it's, it's not um, not a very reliable way to feed your garden and something that's very I guess like on the long thread and someone asked also is like companion planting and um, asking how much you believe in that and how important it is and he believes it's a must try to diversify yeah diversifying diversification yes. absolutely I mean a prime example like you'll notice um, I don't know if we can even walk over there or not I don't know um, wait but, let's just show them the herb plant oh yeah you, I mean you can show me someone herb, asked you can show how, how's it doing too. um but it's, like, it's a beast but like this is but like diversification is very important having diversity in the garden is great because different pests are attracted to different plants and um, I I take this stance on companion planting um, if you are doing companion planting it is something that does not hurt as a gardener um, and I think here here's the thing that I guess is is what I want everyone to take home about companion planting everyone always wants me to do videos on companion planting the reason why I don't do videos on companion planting is because I personally and firmly believe that there are there is not a strong connection to plants that like being by each other um, I, I think plants in their natural habitat will grow next to other plants and there are certain plants that will choke each other out there are certain plants that are you know not a good idea to plant next to each other um, for instance like you know zucchini zucchini gets really large and it overcrowds um, cucumbers they vine they over they, they overcrowd but um, but one of the big issues with companion planting is that oftentimes people assume like people assume like oh you know they say not to plant onions next to beans and I'm like why you know th there's no there's no evidence to prove that this is a bad a bad relationship um, you know they don't they don't they don't fight they don't hurt each other they'll do fine um, and so I think oftentimes w the stance that I take with companion planting is just make sure there's diversity make sure that you combine lots of different plants I mean even a prime example over here you can see a prime example um, we're growing beans we're growing radishes they have since gone to seed we're gonna harvest the seed from those because they are beautiful um, but uh, we have beans we have radishes we have miniatina and then we had lettuce and we had spinach those are now since harvested but like we have lots of different variety in here and you know there's no there's no like guaranteed guide and I think uh, and I, I will I'll make a claim but it's not a it's not a definitive claim I think a lot of times people that that want to write things about companion planting I think they want people to to come to them as an information source and since companion planting is such a it's such like a it's a quasi topic people really don't know the exact truth behind it so there's you talk to 10 people and you're gonna get 11 opinions and I think one of the one of the things about it that I that I dislike is that in that there's there's really no plants like I said that are bad to plant together there's just plants that are not smart to plant together because of the way they grow because of growth habits mm -hmm. but if you follow growth habits and you keep things that are of like kind of uh, like uh, like, alike grow hab growth habits are all alike you're going to be fine I mean for, I, look I mean strawberries and marigolds you'll never see someone saying strawberries and marigolds are a good companion planting because there's so many different variations and options you can choose from it's a lot like a number combination you take one two three four five six seven eight nine you can resequence those numbers billions if not trillions if not even more gazillion times 
but no one's going to have that specific combination just like with just like with marigolds and tomatoes you know or marigolds and marigolds and nasturtiums marigolds and peppers um onions and marigolds you know there's just so many different ways you can flip flop it and there's so many different varieties out there that that's why i take a very firm stance in saying be the creator of your garden see what works see what you aesthetically like as long as you do get the diversity in the garden you're fine and i'm not going to sit here on some throne and say you must plant beans next to onions because that is a good companion plant because i know in my mind experience has said otherwise and i'm someone that i again i just want people to know the I want people to know how to grow a garden and know that the finer details like companion planting really are something you don't have to worry about. Um, they're important, yes, but there's no specific ones. And I think that's where the internet has done gardeners a great disservice, is you have a lot of bloggers that like to tote around their their you know their their gardening knowledge when if you met them in person they'd know they'd know just about as much as a box of rocks because they they just they they just regurgitate a lot of information that they've heard over the years, but it's really not actual valid information. And that's my biggest frustration with the whole thing. Um, and that's why, trust me, I would love to do a video on companion planting. And it's our most commonly requested video on companion planting, or it's our most commonly requested video topic is companion planting. But there's just, there's just not a whole lot of fact to it is my whole thing. So that's that. All right, so um, we just had one question come in. I think it'd be really nice to answer it. It's um, All right, we'll make this Corey, the last one. Yes, Corey asked that he experienced flooding and his garden ground was completely underwater for three days. Stinky sewage and farmer field runoff water. Are the plants still safe to eat or is the soil contaminated? That's, that's tough. I mean, the vegetables are always safe to eat. I mean, let's put it this way: the food you get in your, in your, the food you get in your in your grocery stores, is susceptible to just as many, if not more, nasty chemicals and and feces. I mean, I hate to say it, but in the food packing warehouses and and barns where they where they mass pack, you know they have rat problems, and those rats don't just defecate outside there's not a there's not a rat designated bathroom so there's I mean there's rat poop everywhere in in grocery stores there's cleaning chemicals coming in contact with your food there's pesticides there's herbicides there's fungicides they also spray waste on your on 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 plants in the that are commercially grown they'll take like like uh, uh, liquid waste from cattle and pig feeds they'll take it in a big pool, right? In a massive waste pool, pump it into trucks and spray it on their plant and spray it on their, on their crops. Okay. There are far worse things in the world. And if you're growing your own food, I would still say it's 10 to one better than something you're going to get in the grocery store. And I can say that pretty confidently. Now, if you have, if you live in an area that's reputable for having like high concentrations of, of heavy metals or or like machining or chemical productions. Uh, I don't know, I'm not gonna get into that. I, I'm not gonna be held liable if you start growing like a third toe, but I, I think you're still safe. I really do, I think you're still safe and I think you'll be fine. Um, I think, and, and the plants also, the plants have a natural way. I think people often really worry about growing uh, growing crops in, in soil that's less than ideal. And I think the, the, the biggest take home with that is that plants will naturally filter out toxins, just like your body will naturally filter out toxins. The, the plant does not have any fat in it. And so one of the biggest things that people always say is that, um, you know, chemical buildup in plants. Anything that I've ever read and done research on is that some chemical buildup does happen and occur in seed storage because the seeds have the, the highest concentration of fat in the entire plant. Um, but but uh, chemicals are stored in fat. That's why human bodies are really good receptors for chemicals, um, because the, the fat in our bodies, or the fat in like like cattle or anything that has fat in it, um, you want to keep them as as chemical free as possible because the chemicals will build up in the fat. But because plants are naturally so fat free, 
you can grow them in soil that's less than ideal. And they're even if they take up those chemicals, they're not. It's not going to be stored very heavily in a lot of the fruit. So you can rest assured you're going to be fine. So that's hopefully that's a good answer. I mean, I, I'm very confident in that answer. So. <laughs> As, Hi guys. as a side note, as we, a, we have to definitely we'll, we'll do, do another live stream. We'll do another live stream. I promise you I will fix uh, the live streaming issue. I think we did pretty good. Um, but uh, as a side note, I just wanted to um, let everybody know yesterday was our two year anniversary. Uh, so yes, yeah, Cindy and I have Cindy and I have been married. <laughs> there's a mosquito. Uh, Cindy and I have been married for two amazing years now. Um, and a day. And a day. Uh, so I just wanted to to let everybody know that, um, and uh, we'll, you'll be seeing a lot more of us. So yeah. we're uh, we're. If we didn't get to your life. questions, drop them or stay tuned for the next live stream because uh, we definitely want to answer your questions, guys. <laughs> Thank All right. You. Hey, everyone, have a great day, and as always.